You couldn't have picked a prettier jail. The once former British penal colony has been transformed into a multicultural mecca. A European outpost now finding its place in Asia. All set in an environment like no other. This month on First Class, we're in Sydney. So, if that was the city's past, this was Sydney's future. Radical, different, an icon, not just of the city, but possibly the country, even the entire continent. As iconic and symbolic of the city as the Sydney Opera House has become, it wasn't always a popular idea. It was mired in controversy, some people didn't want it. In fact, some even questioned its unique design. 14 times over budget, 10 years behind schedule. It finally opened its doors in 1973. Now 7 million people walk through them each and every year. And the controversial building has even been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we all know the iconic Sydney Opera House, the exterior, but we've taken you inside to take a look at the interior of the Opera House itself. It's still pretty busy in here. We have four shows each day, tour groups that follow through, and I mean everybody, everybody has played here, but not everybody has sounded as good as maybe they could have. That's because after running so far over budget, sacrifices were made to the interior. So we've shown you the shiny Sydney Opera House, but just across the way makes up the other parts of the iconic harbor. And this piece, some would say, is more representative of the grit and the pioneering spirit of the city. Conceived by a convict, built during the Depression, somehow this utilitarian bridge has become beautiful in its own way. And the Sydney Harbour Bridge is definitely the best way to experience one of the city's icons while simultaneously viewing the other. And steps? Well, I lost count somewhere, but trust me, there are a lot of them. It even comes with a mini-me. Yup, you're not seeing double. This is New York's Hellgate Bridge. The inspiration for the Sydney one and Australia's is 60% bigger because bigger is better, right? Well, it also costs a bit more. Australia only finished paying for the bridge in 1988. The Sydney siders affectionately call it the coat hanger. It's still a main part of the city. We still have 180,000 cars that go over this bridge each and every day, and it's very popular with climbers as well. 2,000 each and every day in the month of January. Now. This was also a feat of engineering when it was built in 1932. At the time, it was the largest arch bridge in the world. And if that's economy, this is first class. And after about three hours, you finally get to see why every step was worth it. And from up here, you can see why there is only one hotel in Sydney with a perfect view of both icons. On one side, you get a view of the iconic Sydney Opera House. On the other side, you get the Harbour Bridge. This is something special. This is the Sydney Suite at the Park Hyatt, which goes for around $17,000 a night, minimum of two nights stay. But if you want to stay during New Year's, then you have to stay at least six nights. And it's going to be a while because there's a five-year waiting list. The hotel recently reopened its doors after a dramatic year-long renovation. This room, it didn't even exist five years ago. In fact, this is the first time that anyone's ever been allowed to film in it. And between the extravagant views, tasteful decor, and the rooftop pool, you'll probably find your next stay at any other hotel a bit more unbearable. The Opera House and Sydney itself has always been a European melting pot of sorts. There are 250 languages spoken in the city. A third of Sydney siders don't speak English at home. And the number of Mandarin speakers is quickly on the rise. 
as Australia's Asian influence is leaving a big culinary mark on the country. And there's no one more committed to Australia's multicultural cuisine than Neil Perry. Come this way. Tell me about Australian cuisine. Well, you know, it's like any modern New World cuisine. There's sort of no real foundation or no real signature dishes, but the contemporary Australian food at the moment is, is really all about that multiculturalism, is a great, about great ingredients, and most importantly, I think the things that come from the sea here. But time to sober up. I'll show you Sydney's new epicenter and all its first-class luxuries. And I'll do my best David Attenborough impression as we go glamping in the Blue Mountains. So as Sydney is about to get the six-star treatment, so let's take you to Melbourne, where we show you the VIP treatments that you get if you roll with Crown. the largest building in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is also where 17 million visitors pass through each and every year, and we're one of them. So we just showed you the premium gaming space here at Crown, but if you're a high roller, this is where you go to. You need a minimum of around $10 million just to get your foot in the door, and we've been given exclusive access to get behind the velvet rope. At the top of Crown Towers, this is where you get to gamble in privacy. Because when you flash this much cash, you don't need the world to see. At the VIP gaming salons, minimum bets is $10,000, up to a maximum of 600000 Australian dollars. But as you know, and as in life, everything is negotiable. So let's bet 10000 on Banker. So at Crown Sydney, you're going to get exactly what you're going to get here at Crown Melbourne. International chefs, you got great restaurants, good shopping spaces, and for high rollers that want some fresh air and some leisure, you have some other options. golf club. Come on Susan, you're hit. Give it a whack. What? Look out Ricky. Watch out Susan. Sorry Ricky. And he's not the only one that needs to watch out because I head to the Blue Mountains and rough it at the Wolgan Valley and even spot a rare albino wallaroo. But why settle for virtual when just 45 minutes by chopper, you could be here. Susan, welcome to one and only Wolgan Valley. Thank you, Michael. So we've shown you some beautiful parts of Sydney, but if you want to get closer to nature and see what Australia is famous for, well, you get out here to the Blue Mountains. Now, I'm a city girl, and it's not every day that I'm on the back of a horse. But every now and again, a girl's got to get back to nature, right? So here at the Blue Mountains, it's really a good opportunity to be 
at one with nature. And when I say one with nature, I really do mean it. You're never alone out here at the award-winning one and only Wolgan Valley Resort and Spa. It's nestled in the Blue Mountains, 7,000 acre Wolomai National Park. They're called the Blue Mountains because of all of these different types of eucalyptus trees. And when the sun hits them, well, they give off this blue vapor, hence the name Blue Mountain. Uh, you don't need to go to the outback to find Australia's native animals because they're also just right here. At dusk, the valley teems with wildlife, kangaroos, wallabies, wombats, even an albino wallaroo. And over creeks and through grasslands, out here I even found the ultimate watering hole. And even though you're in the heart of the Australian bush, you won't be asked to give up all your mod cons, well, maybe except mobile reception. So Michael, we're in the country. First question, is there actual electricity? Absolutely. Connected uh, last week. And what about toilets? Modern ones, obviously. Um, let me get back to you on that one. All jokes aside, the hotel itself is nothing short of extravagant. There are 40 private cabins, each with separate living and bedroom areas, walk-in wardrobes, large bathrooms, and double-sided fireplaces. And you also get your indoor and outdoor pools. Well, if you like to swim. Sydney is all about the sea. Whether it's surfing, swimming, or just hanging out at the beach, Sydney siders never like to be too far away from the sea. So as you see, Sydney has a lot of cool things, but the one thing that Sydney siders always go back to is the beach. I'm gonna go check out Bondi. Thanks for joining us on this edition of First Class. I'll see you next time.